Why is it that getting your child tested in a public school when you suspect they have a disability is so difficult? We're gonna go over that today and teach you steps to get that process rolling to see if your child is in fact in need of special education and related services. If we haven't met, I'm Karen Mayer Cunningham, special education boss, founder of Special Education Academy, training everyone that sits at the 504 IEP table to navigate and negotiate successful student outcomes. So child find is a federal statute under IDEA, the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, and it is the cornerstone of what we do in special education. And that statute says under 300.111 in the federal code that the LEA, the local education agency or school, is charged with ILE, identifying, locating, and evaluating children with suspected disabilities who may be in need of special education and related services. So let's talk about that statute and how it's applicable to your loved one. So what the statute doesn't say is children with for sure confirmed eligibilities, for sure confirmed disabilities. It says suspected disabilities. And so when you go to your public entity, the elementary school, the junior high school, and, and tell them that you have a child you believe has a suspected disability, you have a right to an evaluation. And so I think that some of the times that the children do not get the evaluation is because we don't come in with good language. And so we wanna have the language, first of all, written. We don't have conversations at the pumpkin patch, in the car rider line, at Miss, when we see Miss Cindy at the volleyball game, right? We wanna make sure that we're doing it correctly, legally in writing. Why do I want it in writing, Karen? I'll tell you why, because it starts a timeline. So when I request something from an educational entity, the local education entity, they have 15 days to respond to my request. Here's what's first important, that we put the request in writing and we make it clean. We make it simple. We don't need to pull all the statutes from the federal code and obligations in a five page letter. This is what I would do or I would have my clients do. It's very simple. Follow with me if you're taking notes, now it's a good time. Dear staff, this is my formal request for my child, Billy Johnson, to have special education and related service testing. I believe that he has a suspected disability. Areas of suspected disability are, and I would say learning, attention, attending, communication, social, emotional, functional, whatever you believe that suspected disability area is. We don't have to actually say, I believe he has dysautonomia. We don't have to say that we think he has a linguistic processing disorder. We don't have to say that we believe that he has autism level two. Talk about the impact of that disability. So I would say areas of suspected disability are learning. That covers a lot of things. Um, behavior, emotional, um, attending, sustaining, initiating, all of those things are things that impact a child during the educational day. And so I would say, this is my formal request for my student to have special education related, uh, related service testing, areas of suspected disability are, and I would list those. Um, please let me know when I may come in and sign notice and consent. What is notice and consent? That is a legal document that gives you notification that the school in fact is going to be testing your child for special education and related services. And then you're providing them consent and that you understand what the process is. And so that's my whole email. And I'll probably add, we look forward to working together, right? I think parents ask at school. I think we become very familiar with schools and campuses and it becomes a little too friendly. And sometimes we don't really convey our need for our child to be tested correctly to the school district. So in writing to the staff, just like I said, dear staff, this is my formal request for my student, put in his name, to have special education and related service testing. His areas of suspected disability are, put one of those categories. I look forward to coming in and signing notice and consent. We look forward to working together. So what does that start? That starts a legal timeline. That timeline is 15 calendar days. So what you don't want to do when you suspect that your child may have a disability and may be in need of special education and related services, this is what you don't wanna do. You don't wanna wait. Waiting is a terrible model. Well, Karen, they said they have to do RTI first. They have to do MTSS. They have to do SST. That is not true. That is not true. So January 2011, Office of Special Education Programs issued a letter saying that school districts could not stop special ed testing 
to use another intervention model. We can certainly do it in tandem. We can do it at the same time, but you can't use that language school district to stop the request when it's appropriate for a child to have special education and related service testing. So I hope that's helpful. Make sure that you do that in writing. If you have any more questions about how to get your child properly tested, just comment below. Next training, we're gonna talk about the areas that you wanna ask for testing. And remember, when you get it right for the child, we get it right for everybody. And we'll see you at specialeducationacademy.com.